this time in God of War Ragnarok, getting all the ravens isn't just about 100%ing the game and getting that platinum. This time you can unlock 6 legendary chests that give you a unique armor set and some runic attacks, so it's definitely worth doing. The 48 ravens are split across these 6 realms within God of War Ragnarok, and as you'd expect, they're not easy to find. One thing that does help is listening for their telltale high-pitched call, and then find one and you'll need to hit it with one of your weapons. The 6 realms that you need to traipse across to get all 48 ravens are grouped here and sorted in the order they're encountered in the story. Now. That doesn't mean you'll actually be able to get all 48 ravens from the start though. Certain ravens require late game weapons and abilities, or only become accessible as events in the story unlock new areas. If you're trying to collect the ravens as you play, there are some story spoilers below, so be careful. There's a total of 6 ravens in Midgard, largely around the Lake of the Nine rather than in the woods or around Freya's house to the south. None of these ravens are too difficult to reach, but we'll walk you through them with each labelled on a map. The first raven in Lake of the Nine is found if you hug the south side of Tyr's temple in a little icy alcove you can ride the dog sled into. The raven is up on a perch on the east side, though it will sometimes fly around a little. The second raven in the Lake of the Nine is found by heading to the east side of the lake where there will be two paths, a higher one to the north and a lower one to the south leading to some giant metal doors. The raven is on the wall next to these doors and you can get at it by climbing up the higher northern slope to get the angle right. The raven in the well of Erd is found by if you head towards the well in the northwest lake and climb up to the very top of the cliffs, once there turn back around to see a raven sitting on the ice across from you. A well placed ranged attack will take it out. This raven is in the optional area, the oarsman, to the north, but it's accessible from the shores of the Nine area if you have a good aim. Approach from the lake, vault the initial icy barrier, and the bird is on the cliffside ahead of you to the north. Aim your weapon, throw slightly upwards to compensate for the distance, and it will pin the bird to the rock nicely. The derelict outpost is an optional area to the southwest of the Lake of the Nine. The first of two ravens is actually just outside the area though. Before climbing the chain to the smith shop at the entrance, look back at the path leading here where the damaged boat forms a makeshift ceiling on one side. The raven is nestled inside the boat looking down at a corpse. The second raven in the derelict outpost and the final one in Midgard is inside the derelict outpost itself. Once you enter the big first area, it's on your right, balanced on a wooden post that supports one of the moving cranes. There are 13 God of War Ragnarok ravens to find and kill in the dwarf realm of Svartalheim. It's a big area and you'll have plenty of time to explore it to find some of these ravens, but a lot of them won't be accessible until much later in the game. Here's where you can find them. From the mystic gateway, walk forward and you'll quickly spot the ghostly green raven perched on a tall rock formation to the left. Head into the Holder of Brothers shop it's in the large boat dock area by the river. Once you're at the shop, look up and left and you'll spot the raven perched on a roof of a nearby building. Climb up the watchtower in the middle of the Bay of Bounty and then look out to the water on the southwest side. You'll spot the raven flying low over the water up the watchtower, then back down to the water to complete the loop. The best opportunity to hit this is when it's almost directly overhead on the watchtower. At the rig there is a crane with a large hook at the end of its cable. The raven is sitting on the hook, ready to receive an axe to the beak. In this area when you reach a section open to sunlight, the path ahead may also be blocked by gold metal that needs to be blown up if you've not been here before. The raven in this area is on the large rocks to the left of the path, and the raven will be sitting next to a tree on these rocks. Sail over the rig's dock and climb up the chain. As you clamber up the ledge, you can spot the raven in a gap between some broken wooden planks on the left. On the island there is a path that leads to a chest, but it's blocked off by some gold material that can only be destroyed with an explosive. Grab a nearby charge and throw it at the gold to clear the way. Now you can swing over to the chest where you'll find a small tunnel that you can crawl through. As soon as you come out the other side of the tunnel and get into the wooden platform, look left and you'll see the raven. Now for this one you'll need to have unlocked the spear. Dock your boat on the beach and climb up the rock wall to the right using the wind slot for the spear. This will allow you to reach the upper area where the raven is. But you'll need to destroy the sonic stone blocking another path to reach the raven. With the way cleared, head down the short path and you'll notice the raven circling over the water to the east. 
Going from the previous Raven, you can use the nearby contraptions to swing across to the wooden structure in the water and then swing again onto the island itself. Once you're on the island, head up the path to the gear that lowers the gate. On this path, you'll spot a small hole in the rock on the wall to the left. The Raven is perched at the end of this hole. As soon as you reach the forge by riding the mining wagon, follow the wooden walkway and you'll easily spot the raven circling overhead, or you'll hear it cawing at least. As part of the Forging Destiny quest, you'll make a return visit to the forge and need to head up to a new area to meet the lady. You'll walk through a cave tunnel and will eventually reach a small lake area with a lift in the middle of the lake. As you walk along the path to head down the lake, you'll spot the raven on the cliff wall. There's a raven circling above the water at the centre of the pit mines. From the north side of the mines you can jump down a few points to reach a chain that lets you descend to a small area right by the water. From here you can easily kill the raven. While you're working your way through the apple core, you'll eventually reach a puzzle where you have to freeze water channels with the axe and get Atreus to shoot sonic core chunks to get you across the area on a moving platform. Once you step off the moving platform, look to your left and you'll spot the raven perched on a rafter. There are 10 ravens in Alfheim and you'll need to complete some favours as they'll unlock access to new areas of the realm with ravens in them. Assuming you're doing the grower's secret quest, you'll reach a quiet point where Tyr will mention Freya and you'll need to walk across a rock bridge and jump a small gap. There's a large withered tree to the left of the bridge and you'll easily notice the raven sitting on one of the branches. Early on in your adventure into the Temple of Light, you'll go through a doorway and then up a stone spiral staircase. There's a point about halfway up the staircase where you can drop down into a quite well hidden ledge and onto a new path. Walk along this path and you'll find the raven sitting behind a gate. Stand back from the gate so you can see the purple twilight stone fragment attached to the pillar on your left. You'll need to throw the leviathan axe at the right angle so that it bounces off the twilight stone and hits another piece of twilight stone directly above the raven, causing the axe to bounce again and hit the raven. Much further into the temple, you'll eventually reach a room where you'll need to fight some elves. This room has a pillar of light shooting through the middle of it and a bunch of twilight stone panels on the edge and some in the middle. Once the fighting is over, look out to the northwest and you should spot a raven sitting on a cobble. Head to the brother's shop in the canyon. There's a fenced off area next to the shop and a raven is flying over it in a figure of eight. Head to the temple building on the northern edge of the barrens. There's an old tree very close to this building and a raven is perched on the trunk waiting to be hit. Just a short walk away in the northeast corner of the barrens is a massive dragon-like beast skull on top of a sand dune and you'll find the second barrens raven here. Stand on the north side of the skull and look south. The raven should be quite obviously perched in the skull's eye hole. As you come out from this cave tunnel and arrive at the Forbidden Sands area, you'll notice that there's a large rock formation sticking out to the right. It shows up very clearly on the map and isn't hard to miss. Walk around to the north side of the rock formation and the first of the Forbidden Sands ravens will be there. Head to the southwestern section of the Forbidden Sands and look for the small raised area that's tucked away in a cliff. Head into the nook and then grapple up the wall into the right to reach the raised area. Then look to the northwest corner and the raven will be waiting there on the cliff to be hit with the axe. From the previous raven you can head north along the west rock wall to eventually reach the entrance to the monument to Freya. And you should quickly spot the raven gliding around the area in a figure of eight. Walk up to the monument to get close to the raven and knock it out of the sky. Head to the Elven Sanctum, the large building in the northeast corner of the Forbidden Sands area. Rather than climbing up and going in the front door, stand at the base of the building where there will be a stone door with a pile of rocks in front of it. Use your weapon to smash the rock pile to reveal a hole that you can crawl through. Now go through the hole and down the cave path. You'll quickly spot the raven circling on the left side. Once you've got this one, you've got the final Forbidden Sands raven and the final Alfheim raven. 
Vanaheim has 15 ravers in total, the most of any of the realms, but you'll find 8 of those in the jungles and swamps. The other 7 are in a hidden area unlocked later, and you'll find those further down with their own map. These are the Vanaheim ravens locations for the main jungle area. Looking at the Southern Wilds map, you'll notice that there's a small path very close to the Mystic Gateway that leads west and goes to the river bank. Head down this path to the river and you'll find the raven swooping over the water. To find the only raven in the camp, you'll need to take the winding north path that leads to the eastern Barry Woods. As you emerge from the cave and into the jungle, look to the north to see a big stone ring hanging from the trees. The raven is perched on a tree branch just in front of the stone ring. In the woods, go off the main path and take a left up some stone steps that lead to a ruined structure with a Nornir chest inside. Opposite the chest is a short path that leads to a slightly elevated position that you can see the raven from. When you've reached the abandoned village from the eastern Barry Woods, head inside the large ruined building to the east. Once you're inside, go to the south side of the building, through the archway and down a small path that leads to a stone gazebo. You can then walk up the elevated section and the raven will be visible between two massive tree roots. In this area, look for a small patch of land that you can breach your boat on called Pilgrim's Landing. It's on the western edge of Vanaheim's map. Once on the landing, climb up the temple structure and cross all the bridges until you reach the end where there's a gold legendary chest waiting for you. There's an archway to the left of the chest and you'll be able to see one of the river delta ravens hopping about on a rock on the opposite riverbank. Put your boat here in the bank of the garden and run over to the easternmost building. If you've not been to this garden before, the main gate of this building will be closed and you'll need to climb in through the roof. Inside this building you'll notice the collapsed walls behind the loot chest. This allows you to see the raven perched far away on a branch that hangs over the river. You'll have to aim above the raven quite a bit to compensate for the distance. Once you've lowered the magic rock gate blocking the river in the cliffside ruins, you can row down the stream to reach Goddess Falls. There is one raven in this area and it's just circling around. We recommend that you climb up the cliffs to get a better angle for hitting the raven as it flies by. From Goddess Falls you can reach the Veiled Passage to get the next raven. As you row through the area you'll spot a chest on the right and just beyond that you can see the raven sitting on a tree branch hanging from the cave ceiling. To hit it head to the next area where you can beach your boat, which is just ahead of the raven, then turn around and lob your axe at the bird on the branch. The Vanaheim Crater is such a large part of Vanaheim that it deserves its own map and it contains 7 of the 15 ravens in this realm. You can reach the crater by completing a favour called Scent of Survival which becomes available towards the end of the main story. We also recommend that you reach the jungle area in the south of the crater and open the dam as soon as possible. This will flood the area allowing you to get around by boat and is necessary to access certain parts of the crater. For this raven, head over to the shop towards the northeastern corner of the plains. If you're standing directly next to the shop, turn to face east and you'll notice the raven pecking around at the water's edge, or the cliff edge if you haven't opened the dam. Cross over to the western section of the plains and then run over to the northeastern corner of the main open area. You should be able to see the frozen lightning bolt ahead of you and a raven sitting nearby on the cliff wall to your left. From the previous raven, head west and mantle over a collapsed pillar, then jump down onto a wide open area which has a gate corrupted by a scorn pole on the right and a cave to the left. Head over to the cave before jumping across the gap, look into the pit and you'll spot the raven perched on the rocks below.
Carry on through the rest of this western cave in the plains, you'll eventually climb up a wall and will head down a path which leads to another shop, a mystic gateway and a celestial shrine. To find the next raven, look over to the other side of the wall you just climbed up and the raven will be sitting on the rocks. To reach this raven you need to get to the open area in the north of the plains. There's a mystic gateway called the Overgrown Tower in this area and it's also where you fight a dragon called the Crimson Dread. Once you're in this area there is a pit that you can look into on the western edge and there you'll find the raven. Once you've opened the dam, you can sail around the back of the main temple on the east side of the jungle, the roof of which serves as a boss fight area for another dragon. Walk into the open area where you'll either fight or have already fought the two ogres, and then look south to the temple building. You'll notice the raven sitting on a ledge above a chest. With the crater flooded, you'll be able to sail around parts of the sinkhole and can open up a gate that takes you to the dragon's lair as part of the burning skies favor. As you sail into the dragon's lair, you'll spot the raven on a ledge on the left. You'll need to beach your boat just up ahead, but the raven is very difficult to get from this beach. It's too far and the dragon will pelt you with fire. So carry on through the lair until you climb up to the boss fight area and defeat the dragon. Now that you're there, head to the southwest edge of the area and you'll easily be able to whack at the raven as it's slightly below you on the ledge. There are just two ravens here and both can be found while you play as Kratos and Atreus during a quest called the Summoning. And here's what you need to look out for. As soon as you arrive at the burning cliffs, drop down the cliff and then immediately turn right and follow the path that twists down into a cave with a golden legendary chest inside. To the right of the chest is a gap in the wall with some lava inside and a raven is perched there. As soon as you're done talking to Surtur at his forge, turn left and you'll spot the raven sitting in the archway of a broken building up the cliff. Again, there are only two ravens here and you can only kill them during or after your return trip to the realm as Kratos and Atreus in the reunion main quest. Although both of them are very easy to spot, so you should be able to kill them during this quest. As soon as you arrive on the reunion main quest or by using a mystic gateway to travel here, walk forward and you'll spot the raven flying around near the destroyed wall. In order to leave, you'll be solving a door puzzle that requires you to use the Leviathan Axe and Atreus' runic arrows to freeze the hidden gear and hold the door open. On the other side of this door is a lore marker and the raven is perched right above the rock wall. Now that you've found all of Odin's ravens, first of all, congratulations, that was not easy. You'll also be able to open reward chests in Niflheim. Use a mystic gateway to travel to the raven tree in Niflheim, where you'll see a rather creepy tree covered in all the ravens you just killed, now free of Odin's control. There are six gold legendary chests in front of the tree that you can open depending on the number of ravens you've killed. With all the chests open, you'll be introduced to the Raven Keeper, who seems pretty miffed that you killed all of their ravens. Naturally, it's boss fight time, so you'll need to head to the nearby area to fight the Raven Keeper. Once you've got them down to about a quarter of their health, they will vanish and an ice dragon called the Pale One will appear instead. Defeat the Pale One to make the Raven Keeper reappear, and then finish them off to complete the Eyes of Odin favour. The Pale One will give you two dragon claws, and the Raven Keeper will drop a hilt relic, and the Niflheim Justice Enchantment. Clearly the ravens, the children, appreciated it as well. Is there nothing to be done for them? I believe we have done something. Perhaps. 